Hey, Shalom Wam, Shalom Wam. First off, I'd like to say, call Allah, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. Uh, Shalom Wam to the few uh, Aqua, the sisters who listen and believe. Shalom Wam to all of the new fruit, the new believers, the new viewership coming into this thing, man. Here it is. We're in the last days. All manner of biblical prophecy is unfolding here in the midst of Babylon the Great, which we know through biblical prophecy is America. And right now, the calling through the spirit of the Lord, through his prophets, is for the elect to basically take their mind and their good energy out of this place, man. Because why? Like it says in Micah, the second chapter, arise ye and, dis and depart for the is polluted. I'm loosely paraphrasing. Okay. Because everything in America is pretty much defiled, it's corrupted from the women, just the, the order. This place is just completely out of order. You know, everything is just completely upside down in this place. So the, the best thing, the best sites for the men of the Lord to set on is the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be on earth, like it says in the Lord's prayer when you read in Matthew, the sixth chapter. So, of course... Brothers, we, we, we move in wisdom. We use the things of this world, but not abuse this world to get the basic necessities that we need to go from day to day and to preach this word. But beyond that, we don't have a, a big uh, uh, stakehold in this current world and rulership because ultimately, according to prophecy, it's going to be destroyed by thermonuclear fire. OK, so without further ado, this is just more excitation for the body, just mindset type of uh, thing for brothers just to, to not lean on this world. Of course, we've been uh, intermingled and we've had to assimilate to this Western world culture, but through the Lord waking us up to this truth, we're trying to put off this world more and more because that makes us closer to our power. And we understand that it's going to take a, a, a heavy and abundant amount of mercy to deliver us from what's coming to this place. Because really, we need to just set our affection on things above and not things below. Like it says when you read in Colossians, the third chapter. But I'll start here in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter and the fourth verse. It says, one generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Because people, when we say that this current world, this current rulership is going to be destroyed, they think that we're somehow talking about the earth is going to be destroyed. When according to the scriptures right here in Ecclesiastes 1 and 4, it says the earth abided forever. As I said earlier, the kingdom of heaven is going to play out on the earth with the Israelites in power. OK. So that's why we're looking for the this current world that's under wicked rulership to be brought down. Just as the Lord brought down, brought down ancient Pharaoh, you know, in, in, in Egypt. All right. So we're looking for a, a new kingdom to be set up that's going to be governed in righteousness. So that's why it's important for us to take our mind more and more out of this place. All of these celebrities and, and things that people uh, give notoriety and put on a pedestal in this place, we should be wanting to separate more and more from those things. Now, don't get it twisted. I, I'm not going to act like I'm uh, over righteous. I'm not going to be over righteous. There's certain things that we um, take part in, you know, from time to time for entertainment purposes. Folly is set in great dignity. You know, like brothers may watch sports, boxing, basketball, football, so on and so forth. But that those things don't have a, a, a stronghold over our mind like most of these people do. And if it becomes to if it seem if it starts to be that way, you need to examine yourself. Because the point being made, we should be trying to separate from this world more and more. Going against the grain, so to speak, to what this world deems trendy, to what this world deems uh, uh, honorable, or whatever the case may be. But, uh, oh yeah, I want to get this real quick. This is uh, in the book, or the book of Jeremiah 51 and 6. It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon. And Babylon, it means land of confusion. 
And America is just completely just ran in all manner of confusion. Everything is completely upside down. All the roles that the Bible identifies for order's sake, they've been completely misconstrued between you know, men and women, family, children, just in every facet of life. It says flee out of the midst of Babylon. And right here is not talking about getting a passport and, and, and jet setting to Bali or any of these other islands, you know, or going to the Caribbean. It means taking your mind and your, and your and, uh, and godly energy, for lack of a better word, out of this place. It says flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. So right now we're in a time of the Lord's vengeance, man. And just like it says in Revelation, the 18th chapter, the Lord is going to judge Babylon the great. There's a great judgment that's being prepared or that's been prepared in the spiritual realm for Babylon the great. We're just waiting for it to manifest in the flesh. And we're not trying to be caught up in that iniquity. We're not trying to be caught up in that judgment. We're hoping to be delivered out of that judgment. That's why we make our bodies a living sacrifice to go and teach the truth in hopes that the Lord will show us mercy to deliver us out of this uh, impending destruction of Babylon the Great. Um, I'll go to the next scripture. This is Romans 12 and 1, because I just quoted it, but I'll just get it. This is Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So that's why brothers go out on the highways and the byways and preach. That's why brothers put up these uh, YouTube videos on these various channels. That's why we fellowship and break bread with the brothers, the Akim, okay? We basically forsake things in this world and make our bodies a living sacrifice to honor the Heavenly Father and His Son. And it's our reasonable service because we're hoping that we receive mercy because we know we're in a time of major judgment. Here's the point in verse 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world. Why? Because this world is polluted, is defiled. It says, and be not conformed to this world. And this world is under uh, the guise of the spiritual demon, Satan. That's the God of this world, the spiritual demon, Satan. Which we know that the physical counterpart to the spiritual demon, Satan, is the nation of Esau, Edom. Which we know are a majority of of the self-proclaimed white people today, according to their, their father's line, okay? Because the Bible identifies all nations. There's no such thing as white, black, brown people. All of these names that have be, been used to re-identify the nations that the Lord identified in the Bible. But not to get off topic, I'm going to read this again, Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we're not supposed to be assimilating to this world. We're not supposed to be uh, after the fashion and after the look and the trends of this world. We should be trying to separate more and more from this place. That's for, for even for some brothers, you know, our, the, the world really can't agree with our spirit. Some people at your job or in your day to day, they may think you weird. Mainly it's because of the dietary law. If that issue comes up, that right there is going to have people looking at you a certain type of way. But it's supposed to look like that, man, because the Lord is setting us up to be holy, to be separate, to be clean, clean from these filthy people within this world. And we're not supposed to have the mindset of the people in this world, man. Because everybody's after the, their own lust. No one has a fear of the Heavenly Father in this world. This is a faithless generation. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high. 
And we've been taught the will of the most high. The, the Lord, you know, sent teachers to teach us this word to now we know the will of the heavenly father. And now we're going through that process of proving our faith through that trial of adversity. So hopefully, Lord willing, we may be accepted in mercy to be delivered in the time of destruction, which that time is, is quickly approaching. And the Lord is showing all types of signs in the heavens that, you know, he's making his, his way closer to, to visiting this earth as we know it. Because right here, you know, we're just days away right here in North Texas. A solar eclipse is going to we're going to be right in the path of it. OK. But I'm going to get a, another script just to prove my point of how brothers, we need to just get more in separation mode going against the grain of this world. Everything's played out at the end of the day also, too. But. Um, this is uh, uh, the book of Mark, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to go right to the verse. Or to the point, rather, uh, Mark 4 and 19, it says in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it become unfruitful. So that's the cares of the world, man. Caring about your woman, caring about your family, which we do care about those things for brothers who have a woman, a wife, a family, children. But. The scripture says in Matthew 6, seek the kingdom of the most high first and all things shall be added. So your priorities have to be aligned. Your, 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 your wife or your woman, your family, your children, it doesn't come before your service and your devotion to the heavenly father and his son. And then it goes on. It says the deceitfulness of riches. You know, the scripture says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Most of our people they're just so gung-ho at getting that bag, which money is a defense. So if there's opportunity where I don't have to go off, where I don't have to compromise, where I can will and deal and use the knowledge that the Most High gave me to get money, hey, then so be it. But I'm not going to uh, 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 put trying to get money over serving the Lord because that's a lack of faith in the root of money. And the love of money, like I said, is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. OK, it says. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. And there's all different types of lust that draw out men. Just pick up your phone and go on social media and those lusts are going to be drawn out. And ultimately, those things choke out the pure word. And the, the things that the most high sown in our spirit through this word, it becomes unfruitful if we are too acquainted with this world. Because the, the mindset to have is that the most high is about to set up something bigger, better in all manner of righteousness that we can truly enjoy. We're going to be able to truly enjoy our women, our children, our families. The other nations that have had us in captivity, starting with chief enemy number one, Esau, Edom, they're going to be in captivity under us. The Most High's laws are going to govern the world. OK, that's what we're looking forward to. But I'll get this and I'll end out, you know, the short lesson. I just want to sh share a few thoughts. Because brothers, I've been hearing through the spirit. I know the elder Yasha Wamba and many other brothers always be saying, man, we got to get out of here. That's been the theme of a lot of brothers that their spirit is really crying that out. We got to get out of here, man. Like he says in Matthew, the 24th chapter, if the most high, he didn't shorten the days for the elect's sake, it will be no flesh to be saved. I'm loosely paraphrasing because if we're going at the pattern of wickedness and the lack of the fear of the most high that we're going in, man. It ain't going to be nothing left, man. We got to get out of here, man. It's just everything's just too defiled and polluted at this point. And, and, and everything in this world can eventually destroy you. But uh, I'll read this uh, in Second Peter, the third chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 12. 
just to hit the point. It says, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. In Babylon, we know the great, according to prophecy, is going to be melted with fervent heat from the thermonuclear missiles that are going to be shot by nations like Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, so on and so forth. Even some of America's allies are going to be shooting missiles on this place. And then, of course, the chariots that the scriptures speak of are going to be laser beaming this place. When Yahweh Shah makes his return, that's going to be that lake of fire that the scriptures talk about in Revelation. Babylon being on fire. It says, verse 13, nevertheless, we, talking about the elect of the nation of Israel, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for new heavens. And when you go into that word new, it basically means refreshed because we know that the earth abides forever. But that fire is going to be a cleansing agent to purify, to refresh the earth because the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. It says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So we're looking for new heavens and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. We're looking for a righteous kingdom. The scripture says, Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Because everything in this place is just completely defiled. The water, the air, the, the, the animals, the, the sea and aquatic animals especially. The women, children are being attacked. The food supply you know, they're 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 uh, basically making food in laboratories and factories. Everything is just completely out of bounds in this place, man. So we're looking forward to a kingdom that's going to be completely operated and ran in righteousness. But without further ado, Lord willing, this edified. Uh, I think the point's been made. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.